Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. All right. That means good Sabbath. Happy Friday night into Saturday. Welcome to TBT Remote. For those of you who have never been to a Temple Beth Tikva service, or even maybe not aware that you're now part of a Temple Beth Tikva <laughs> service, welcome. We are very glad you're here, whether you're over there or over here. Over there, there's still plenty of room over here, so please come in. Don't be shy. Um, we, we are going to celebrate Shabbat in this beautiful, beautiful setting. And you can, as you come in, get a packet, which are on this side, so that you can follow along with our service. And we'll begin singing these words of gathering from the Psalms. He named out how beautiful it is to be together as one community here on the beach on this beautiful evening. Page two, let's sing together. story of a little boy who every day in the summer escapes the house for the cool shores at the beach, goes down to the water, and of course the first few times he does this his mom looks at him and says, what are you doing? Where are you going? Don't you know I'm worried about you when you leave the house? And he says, I'm going down to the beach. And she says, but it's so dangerous there by yourself. And besides, why do you need to go there every day? And he said, because that's where I feel closer to God. Well, what mother could refuse? But she said, but don't you know that God is everywhere? God is all around us, just like we are in this community in a circle here. God is everywhere. And wherever you go, God is the same. And he responded, maybe God is the same, but I'm not the same. Sometimes we need a little inspiration. We need a little bit of a break from the routine. We need a little chance to get out to the beach. Who's feeling good with a little bit of sun and seeing the water right now? Who likes being at the beach? Yeah, who doesn't like being at the beach, right? And so sometimes we need to change our location in order to change our spiritual orientation. And so that's why it's so special to be here right now. I, um, I'm so glad to be here with all of you. Rabbi Danny Moss here with uh, Cantor Jen Boyle, um, again from uh, Temple Beth Tikva, currently under construction. But, um, but we're happy to be the wandering Jewish community in these beautiful locations. We'll begin this evening by lighting our Shabbat candles together. And I think they actually stand a chance of staying lit tonight. So we'll see um, as we're a little more protected in here. So if you'd like, please join Cantor and myself in this blessing as we light together, establishing the warmth and light of our community for Shabbat.
see that a few people have come in since we began together. Please don't be shy. Come on in. There's still plenty of room here. That sun is going behind that building in about 12 and a half minutes. Um, and, and of course, you should be comfortable wherever you are. Um, our, our COVID policy is that masks, when we're inside buildings, are required. And they're absolutely optional. So if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask, for whatever reason, that's absolutely fine. The most important thing is everybody should feel safe and healthy in our community space here tonight. Um, we'll enter into the Psalms of Kabbalat Shabbat, symbolized by Lecha Dodi, that ancient, ancient song where the mystics in the north of Israel would go out and envision Shabbat as, um, as a bride to be greeted before this wedding, this beautiful coming together every single week. So page three, Lecha Dodi, love hearing our voices rising together as one. And not only are we entering into Kabbalat Shabbat, we are also entering now into the month of Elul, the month before, as we prepare ourselves spiritually for the high holidays. Um, and so we use this tune, Do Di Li, often heard at weddings, um, because there's a connection between Elul and the bride. Um, the phrase, Ani Le Do Di, Ve Do Di Li, um, spells out Elul. And so in the month of Elul, we use this special melody. Lecha. certain moments in our service, we'll invite you to rise. Of course, only if it's comfortable in your body to do that. We certainly support you um, staying seated if that is what you need to do too. But symbolically, we now rise as one community, counting one another's presence in strength as we formally enter our worship service of Ma'ari. Baruch Hu is at the bottom of page three. Page three. that way, more or less.
continue on the next page of your prayer service. Let's just take a moment to gaze out at the beautiful scene around us. And as we honor time and light and the cycles of nature, I invite somebody to notice something about the scene around us that you might not have noticed last time you were at the beach. So much of the spiritual experience is just in the moment where you see something through new eyes for the first time. And maybe it's just you didn't realize how many different shades of blue there are out there to see at one time. Maybe it's that you didn't realize how beautiful the sun looks when it's glinting off of the islands out there. Maybe it's uh, a small creature that some of the kids back there see in the sand below your feet. Anything wiggling down there? Whatever it is, it's a chance for us to appreciate creation, the, nat the natural cycles of time, and the transitions that we go through together as this beautiful planet continues along its journey. So we'll read together upon that noticing, whatever it is, that last line of Hebrew at the top of page four. Baruch Ata Adonai Ama'ariv Aravim. And we'll read together in English on the following paragraph. Adonai, when you gave us Torah, you revealed your love and compassion for us. Your Torah teachings guide us toward holiness and justice. What greater gift might we receive than the Torah? the heart of our lives. It is in our love of you that we strive to be the holy people we might be. Praise to you, Adonai, who expresses love of Israel through words of Torah. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema. Shema Yisrael. We continue on the following page of the Aha Shah. to the Temple Beth Tikva Religious School before. Can't you don't get to raise your hand. We have some representatives from many different generations. All right, I'm looking for especially a representative from a slightly younger generation, sorry. Although it's so lovely to have a multi-generational Beth Tikva family here, truly special. I wonder if there's somebody out there from a slightly younger generation who can tell us a story that they heard in religious school about water, a big story that happens at the water. Is that ringing any bells? 
I'll give you a hint. It also it also follows some really dramatic plagues. And something really dramatic happens to the water. <laughs> and some people walk through Oh yes. Wait, say it really loud. The Red Sea parts. Okay, who else is gonna say that? Okay, I know you guys. You're experts, okay. Yes, yes, exactly. This is this is perhaps the best possible representation of something that seems so impossible to even behold, but just looking out at the sea. Imagine if an invisible line just sort of shot through it, and the Torah says it, that the water was like walls, on both sides. It was like it was like the water just sort of froze in place. Like, who's ever been to one of those aquariums where you can, like, walk through the water underneath? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Except for without the glass. And you just have to trust that at any moment you're still going to be safe. And the water is going to stay there. That's the, that's the idea of a miracle. It's that sense of trust, wonder, and hope. So that's, we hope, the energy that we connect with in Micha Mocha. So let's try to get a sense of that wonder, that hope, that miracle. Page six. time, our thoughts turn to those we love and to the hope that we have for everybody we love when the evening comes, which is that they'll have an evening of peace, of quiet, of safety. And that's why every, every nighttime prayer we say, Hashkiveinu Adonai Eloheinu, God, lie us down to peace through a day of renewal. Keep from us the things that would do us harm and bring us to the new day refreshed and renewed. And so a hope for the evening Hashki Venu, the bottom of page six. Hashki Venu Adonai, Eloheinu Leshalom, Mehamidinu Mokeinu Lechaim, Hashki Venu Turn the page and look for a minute at the uh, at the Vishamru prayer. You see how the last line of Hebrew, and you can see it in either the English transliteration or the Hebrew characters. You see how it says Shavat Vayina Fash? Everybody find that? Yeah. My young friends over there, can you raise your hand when you found it in the Hebrew, please? We're looking for Shavat Vayina Fash. It's in the on the top of the page. Young or young at heart friends. Yes. The, this last line of the prayer, which, which teaches us to keep Shabbat and to honor it throughout, throughout time, says that God rested, God Shabbat, Vayina Fash, in creating the world. So the question is, what does this word Vayina Fash mean? It doesn't appear that frequently. It's kind of mysterious. But it has a Hebrew word in it that some of us might know. What word does Vayina Fash contain within it? Another Hebrew word. Where's the Torah study group? <laughs> We said it, somebody said it over here. Nefesh. Nefesh, right? The word nefesh means, what does nefesh mean? 
It means soul. It means breath. It means the Torah study group is going to be shocked by this. It actually means neither of those things. It actually means neck. The word nefesh means neck. What does that mean? So God rested and necked? Oh, that sounds kind of adult. No. No. God God rested vayina fash. Okay, so here's where that word comes from. Vayina fash comes from the Psalms, where the psalmist who's feeling in trouble says, God, I feel like I'm in a position where I'm wading into the water all the way up to my nefesh, all the way up to my, my neck, my mouth. And so the connection is deep. That's why nefesh also means breath. It's connected to our breath and our body. And one way to translate it is God took a deep, deep soul breath. So I'm going to invite all of us when we approach this next prayer to feel that deep, deep soul breath. A chance to let things go that we were carrying into this space. A chance to get a little excited for the weekend and clarify our inner state. To maybe set a goal for the rest of the day for something we'd like to, to care for in ourselves or someone else. And to take that, take that deep, deep soul breath. So let's all stand on up. I'm going to invite us all to Vaina Five. Take a deep, deep soul breath. And let it out slowly. One more time. Deep, deep breath. And let it out. And this time as you take that deep, deep soul breath, let the exhalation be the prayer. Let it be a prayer as we begin together the words of the Amidah. Adonai sefatayitah uviyahitayivatecha Adonai openeth my lips that my mouth may declare your praise Adonai Eloheinu Elohei avoteinu veimoteinu Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Me'aha. El Hagadol, Hagibor, Hanukkah, El Elyon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Mekonei Apol, Mezofer Hasei Avot Imahot, Page eight.
in this exceptionally beautiful place on this exceptionally gorgeous evening for a moment of silent prayer I'd like to invite anyone to find their own space to find their own spot for those of you who have been in the sun although it is going down find a place in the shade if you like for those of you who have been close by in the shade maybe you want to go find a place next to the water I encourage anybody who wants to to take three four minutes find your own place find a moment to say whatever it is you need to say i do encourage you to try to make it a prayerful moment it's easy to schmooze and talk let's take a moment for silent prayer wherever you would like and when we hear the guitar music we'll come back together and sing a meditation afterwards Ya 
our Jewish covenant. Um, every person who is born into this world represents something new and something that never existed before, something original and unique. It is up to us to know and recognize that this new person is unique in the world, a singular character and personality, and that there has never been anyone like this child right here before. For if there had been, there would never have been any need for new life to be this new life to be in the world. Kid, you get a unique opportunity to be part of the covenant today. <laughs> Why? Because Abraham, when he made an agreement with God, said, God... Why should I enter into this covenant with you? Why should I start a new people, a people that you are entering right now, that you're becoming part of? And God said, look out at the seashore. Can you count every single grain of sand? If you can count every single grain of sand, that is how numerous your descendants will be. So you are fulfilling and continuing the promise of the Jewish people today by establishing the next link the next grain of sand, very cute grain of sand, <laughs> in that covenant. As God said in Genesis, I will maintain my covenant between me and you and your offspring, an everlasting covenant through the ages, to be God to you and your offspring to come. Did you bring that I did not, but I do have my kid. Okay, let me grab mine for this next part. Can I help you with the guitar? The guitar? Um, the okay. Good. 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 Do you want me to wrap it around all of them together, or what do you? Think? Um, might not. Might not. Just him. Yeah, just him. Yeah. 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 Ready? Oh, <laughs> You need to grow into that a little bit. Yeah, I got 12 years. <laughs> okay. So the tali is an embracing symbol of the covenant between God and the Jewish people. And today we are reminded of the mitzvot by the tzitzit, the fringes on its corners. And today... Oh, it was just a shot. <laughs> today we envelope... Michael into the folds of Atali as a symbol of his entry into our covenant with God and the people of Israel. Michael is a welcome member of our Jewish people. Today he becomes the newest link in the covenant of the people of Israel. And so in the words of our ancient tradition, we bestow upon him his name, Eloheinu Veloheabotenu Veimotenu Hayem et Hayeled Hazeh Leaviv Ul Imo and now formally we bestow upon this child the name Michael Michael Herschel, son of Eliana and Robert. May God who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Leah and Rachel, bless the parents, Alexandra um, and Robert and Michael, their newborn child. Kishem Shanik Nasab May the family rear this child into adulthood, imbued with love of Torah, the performance of good deeds, 
and may he be privileged one day to create a family of his own. Together we say, Amen. Amen. So we're going to need <laughs> to <sign> here. <laughs> uh oh. I won't be responsible for taking that away from him. <laughs> As at all joyous occasions, we lift the Kiddush cup filled with sweet juice, sweet wine, and we say the blessing together. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei for the first time, our Shiachianu as well. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Shiachianu v'kiyamanu v'kiyanu l'zman ha'aseh. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, whose blessings fill creation for keeping us alive, for sustaining us, and allowing us to reach this moment together. And we have one last blessing to offer you, your family, and to little Michael, Mikhail Kershaw, who is now officially... Um, maybe not the youngest member, but one of the youngest members of our Jewish community. <laughs> and he can't get enough of his kiddush. <laughs> so we offer him these words of priestly blessing. May God bless and keep you. May God's light shine like the sun on you, showing you favor. May God always take care of you and give you the best Jewish gift that we have the gift of shalom, which is peace. I thought you were going to say mother's guilt. Mother's guilt. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Congratulations. Thank you. Beautiful. I know you have the name in your team. Didn't want that. you to forget about yep. that. Yes. You can give it to them now. It's okay. I'm going to start speaking. I can't compete with that. Um, so I'm just going to share a couple of reflections for the beach. As I was thinking about spending time in this beautiful place, I just, am, as you can tell, I'm just so taken by this location. Susan grew up in, in Rhode Island, so she's convinced me of the beach lifestyle. And we, um, and we always love it here so much. There are two ideas in every big Jewish idea, in dialectic, in tension. Okay, so the classic version of this, maybe a story that some of you have heard, a guy named Simcha Bunim, a great teacher in the Hasidic movement, said that he carries around two slips of paper, one in each pocket. And at any given time, he, he, he puts one, one, one piece of paper out in the world, or puts it back in and takes the other one out. And on one piece of paper, the phrase is written from the Bible, the world was created for me. And on the other piece of paper, it says, I am dust and ashes. And depending on what situation in his life he needs to use, he takes out the one that encourages him to have some self-confidence, or he takes out the one 
that encourages him to have a little bit more humility. And that's where we vary between as human beings. So I'd like to talk about a very beach-like dialectic tonight. In that particular way, we carry two slips of, pap of paper in our pockets in a slightly different respect. The words we shared just, just a little bit ago for Michael's beautiful blessing, when God is speaking to Abraham, God says, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand of the seashore. It gives me chills every time I hear this verse, especially in the light, in light of the Shoah, the idea that the Jewish community can nevertheless prevail and grow and thrive gives me a sense of deep purpose. I would call this pocket, this slip, the power of vision, of grandiose ideas, of bigness, of eternity, the power of vision. So that's pocket one. But in pocket two, we have a different story. And this is also one of my favorite Jewish stories that happens on the seashore. And it's a story of a little girl who sees the starfish on the beach. Have you heard this one? Yes. You probably tell it better than I do. But this one goes like this. Little girl is running around the beach. She sees that these starfish have, have washed up throughout the entire length of the beach. And we're not talking about a small beach like this cute one, maybe something more like Hamanasset, where you could see all of the shoreline. And so she's running up and down. She's starting to sweat. She's picking up every, shore, every starfish and throwing it back in the water. And eventually her parents come up to her and say, you know, what you're doing is so sweet, but you cannot possibly save every single starfish. And she says, I know I can't save every single starfish, but for each individual starfish, what I do makes the complete world of difference. An idea in the Talmud teaches that for every life saved, an entire world is saved. For one small deed, the potential of eternity exists in that one life saved. And so, on the one hand, we have the pocket of eternity and vision and the future yet to be actualized. And in the other pocket, we have the first step, the first starfish. Just like Rabbi Simcha Bunim kept these two slips of paper in his pockets, we can hold the sea in one and the starfish in the other. The vision in our minds always in the back, and also the first step. Perhaps as I'm saying these ideas, you're reflecting on something in your own life. Perhaps it's something to do with work or family life, saving big for a financial goal, even the, the pandemic that we're in right now and combating it as a country. For some of these tasks, the sheer size of it feels daunting, as I imagine Abraham must have felt when he was the only Jew. And he was told, your descendants are going to be like this, like this beach full of sand. But like the child with the starfish, we have to remember that every single act we do matters. Every life we touch is a step that moves us in the right direction. The most important thing in any big goal, as I always remind my B'nai Mitzvah students, is just to get started, to start working. So I'll ask all of you, because I don't know, which slip of paper do you need to take out of your pocket tonight? Do you need to feel the spaciousness of big vision? Do you need to look out at the sea and feel that you're moving somewhere? Or do you just need to get started on something that you've been putting off? A simple task, picking up the phone to call someone you've been meaning to call, a word that perhaps went unsaid that needs to be said to a loved one in your life. This Shabbat, I would encourage us all to meditate on whether we need the starfish or whether we need the sea. I'll share one more idea, uh, a moving poem written by Chana Senesh, who, uh, who gave her life so that the state of Israel might exist as a Hungarian paratrooper. 
And she, while walking in pre-state Israel, pre-state Palestine, was walking up the coast in Caesarea in the north of the country. And as she walked, she looked out at the water. She saw the waves breaking. And in that beautiful view, she felt both very alive, but also very small. There's the dialectic coming back. She felt the sense of eternity and also the tininess of her existence all at once. And she somehow was able to put that feeling into this beautiful poem, Eli, Eli. She, she says, Oh God, my God, I pray that these things never end. The sand and the sea, the rush of the waters, the crash of the heavens, the prayer of the heart. if you want to try singing with us. Oh God, my God, I pray that these things never end. The sand and the sea. The sand and the sea. The rush of the waters. The rush of the waters. The crash. The crash of the heavens. The prayer. The prayer of the heart, the sand and the sea, the rush of the waters, the crash of the heavens, the prayer of the heart. Looking into our hearts, we take a moment now to reflect and show care for all those who are in our community who are in need of healing. It is our custom at Temple Beth Tikva to offer a Misha Berach prayer so that they might find a renewal of strength. And we hope and we pray um, one day some healing in their bodies, minds, and spirits. So I'll share the names of those made known to our congregation this week. And if you have somebody else who you're praying for and you'd like to share their name, you'll have the opportunity to do that too. We think this evening of our temple members, April D'Amato, Norma Diamond, Henry Gettenberg, Carol Gordon, Tom Louie, and Josh Lipschitz, and loved ones of our community, Shai Tovia, Connie Ambrosino, Harriet Cohn Haggerty, Mickey Bart, Jay Fliss, Sue Yaris, Sydney Cher, Bart Young, Sarah Bryant, Helen Dreyfus, Jennifer Murphy, Jane Schwab, Marion Macon, Ben Peck, Mark Potter, Martha Potter, Sandy Spector, Celeste Hox, Georgia Jennings, Sabine Meyer, Gloria Newell, David Char, Amelia Sidney, Joan Sidney, Josephine Sidney, Gail and Sam Feidelberg, Deborah Poulin, Devora Shulamit, Betsy Powers Ross, and Maris Dorsey. If there are other names we should add to those prayers, please feel free to share their names at this time. Please. Very back Malone. Very back Malone. Others? Please. Carol Please. Anyone else back here to share the name of the loved one from each other? 
We'll raise our voices together in that healing prayer then on page 10. Misha Beiroth. point in the service, every single Friday night, we remind ourselves that although the world isn't perfect, we can all play a role in making it somewhat more so. So, Aleinu L'Shabeach, we invite you to rise, page 11. 11, Aleinu L'Shabeach. Everybody, please have a seat, and I think we're doing announcements now, right? Okay, Sabrina's in the back, I think. Come on up, Sabrina. Sabrina Morg is, uh, is greeting us on behalf of our board. We have a clear path for you, I hope. A little bit of a maze here. <laughs> You have one of these? Yep. Amazing. Great. That's up. You guys have been looking straight into We're the sun already. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. My name is Sabrina Maurer. I currently serve on the board of directors as a member at large. Uh, a warm welcome to all of our guests here this evening. Tomorrow, join us via Zoom for Torah study at 9 a.m. led by Rabbi Moss. The link is in your inbox. Uh, next Friday, August 20th, Shabbat services will be on the green in front of the First Congregational Church in Madison. Uh, we recently announced the dates and times for our high holiday services for 5782, starting with our Spikot service on Saturday, August 28th at 8 p.m. on the green. Updates and more detailed information will follow on Sunday, so please check your inbox. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat shalom. Yeah, Thank you very much. 
And I should add that we're very excited um, that Kim was able to confirm with the town that we have use of this beautiful space for our tashlich and for a special children's service that we're going to be having at Rosh Hashanah. So we'll look forward um, very much to seeing you back here, hopefully for another beautiful day, maybe a little less hot. <laughs> As we conclude our service uh, now, we certainly do take a moment uh, to remember those loved ones whom we have lost and those who have passed away in recent days or who are remembering because their uh, death took place at this time in seasons past. And so I'll read the names of those who have passed away in the last 30 or seven days, uh, and, then, and then those who have passed away at this time in years past. I invite you, if you're comfortable, to rise as I read the name of your loved one, and then we'll have a moment also for anybody else who'd like to share uh, the name of someone they're thinking of and remembering this evening. In the period of Shloshim, we think of Lillian Katanik, mother of Stephen Katanik. We think of Joseph Flatley, wife, uh, husband, excuse me, of Karen Flatley, father of Sabrina Holton. And for yard sites this evening, we remember Stanley Stahl, Arthur Beck, Millie Corbin, James Maurice Hyman, Abraham Milstein, Anthony Michio, William Fogelman, Bob Johnson, Harold Shapiro, Irving Gendel, Leon Rosenblatt, Milton Marcus, Ned Weiss, and Robert Tor. Are there others who we should add to our prayers this evening? Somebody saying hi tonight? Thank you, David Sugarman. Thank you. Anyone else saying Kaddish this evening? I invite us to rise as one community as we honor the names of those we have loved and lost. Page 12. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shimei rabba be'alma di barach hiri'utei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael Ba'agala ubizman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shmei raba mevorach le'alam u'lilme amaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitaseh. V'yitadar v'yitaleh v'yitalal shmei d'kudesha v'richu. Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata. Tush b'chata v'nechamata. Da'amiran be'alma v'imru amen. Yehei shlama raba min shmaya. Bechayim aleinu ve'alko Yisrael. Amen. Ose shalom b'mermav. Huya ose shalom. Aleinu ve'alko Yisrael. Amen. May all their memories endure for blessing in our lives. Together we say, Amen. Ose shalom b'mermav. Huya have a seat everybody Shabbat Shalom so wonderful to be here together such lovely group of people and such numbers it's terrific and a sign of things to come I am sure uh, I think we will have a closing song first and then do a little kiddish and then we have a surprise all right so uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about our closing song Cantor sure. Um, our closing song, uh, like I mentioned before, we are in the month of Elul, where we spiritually begin to prepare for the high holidays, which I'm not going to tell you how many days away they are, but they are <laughs> for, the rab for the rabbi's sake and then. <laughs> high fives. <laughs> they are coming up. <laughs> um, and so, during the month of Elul, we recite um, Ahat Sha'alti, Psalm 27. Um, and so we conclude our service tonight uh, by by singing this song together. And I think it's in the in the prayer packet, isn't it? Um, I don't know about that.
Oh, it wasn't? I thought I saw a page number. No? Oh, okay. Never mind. In that case, there's always Yai Lalai, which is the, the, good, the good way to participate, too. One cool thing about tonight is we have a lot of people who are in the, I would say, generally pre-confirmation age. So anybody who is under the age of like 14, 15, we invite you to come up and help us do Motsi and Kiddush. It's really easy. Come on. All you have to do is stand here. We'll help you with it. It's super, it's super easy. Come on up. Or even if you were just confirmed, you can also come up. <laughs> Okay. All right, where did I put my challah? I've lost my challah. Where do you think it's hanging? Will you, you grab it? Appreciate that. Awesome. Come on up. Come on up. Okay. Come on up. Come on up. Don't be shy. I'm glad you're here. All right. So first, give this to cancer. All you have to do is sing along. Okay. It's a really easy job. And all of the adults are super happy. It's going to be amazing. All right. Ready? Ready. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Aarei meri hagafen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kishanu v'mitzvotav, Verasav anu, Vishabat kodcho, Unfortunately, I don't think we're quite at the point yet where I can put, put, put a little bit of this hala for all of you to grab. I think one day we'll be getting there soon, so I apologize about that. But we'll say the blessing together with all of your help. All right, ready? I know you can all help with this. Ready? One, two, three. All right, I demand an elbow bump from everybody who came up here, please. You are, you are officially dismissed. You did a great job. All right, how about it for these young people? Good job. Thank you. We're going to hang out with you a little bit more after this. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you got one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great. Amazing. Okay, is Jill around here somewhere? I thought I saw her over there. Okay, so you might know that the real work of the High Holidays actually happens before Rosh Hashanah. So we're starting now 
And the month of Elul, as Cantor has said very eloquently, is a time of that introspection, a time of cheshbon hanefesh, and figuring out what we want to do and reorient and change on the inside, on the outside. And one of the things that we have is an important symbol that wakes us up with a Jewish sound. And so we have a shofar call tonight. Traditionally, the shofar is blown every day during the Hebrew month of Elul leading up to Rosh Hashanah. So Jill has very, very uh, kindly volunteered to come blow. And I've got my two. Okay. And, um, and it's also traditional. Well, what's not traditional is to blow the shofar on Shabbat, but we are Reformed Jews. And, um, and we're going to invite everybody to rise, as is customary, for the sounding of the shofar. Are you ready? I'll give you a call. One. Tequila! That'll do. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Yasha Koa. All right, thank you everybody. Shabbat Shalom. We look forward to schmoozing with you and greeting you. Thanks for coming to Shabbat Services.